Hello everybody, this is Pat Torpy from Mr. Big, and this is my first drum instructional video, and I'm coming to you from Los Angeles. This is at uh, Rumbo Studios, where Mr. Big has recorded our last three albums in this very room. Uh, during this video, Billy Sheehan's going to be performing some Mr. Big songs with me, so we can show you how the rhythm section works within Mr. Big. We're also going to be doing a special performance for this video of some Mr. Big music. Well, basically, it's music from Billy and me that has never been heard before, special for this video. And I also want to concentrate on four main things. Um, first one being paradiddles and how important they are to me and how I've used it in my development. Uh, grace notes, how important that is. Footwork and the hi-hat. So let's begin. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about, just a little bit, is my grip. Uh, I think I assume everybody knows how to how to hold a drumstick that works for them. Um, I'm just telling you about what works best for me. This isn't the right way or the wrong way. This is just the way I do it. I'm not. I wasn't formally taught, but this what's this is what's worked for me. Um, I use what is called a, a German grip, where the top of my hand is basically parallel with the floor. Um, and then sometimes my right hand turns over a little bit where my thumb comes up like this. See where the thumb is basically going up. When I go around the toms, my hand, my right hand turns over a little bit sometimes. But for the most part, I play with a very uh, kind of a proper German grip, it's called. This is called Swiss, and this is German, and I use the German type. This is what works best for me. Okay. Paradiddles. Uh, there's, there's, I think there's seven main rudiments, um, and uh, they're all important. There's double stroke rolls, flams, single stroke rolls, and some other ones. Um, but to me, the paradiddle is the most important. Uh, it's the combination of a double stroke and a single stroke, and that's why it's so useful in uh, many, many different ways. Um, I'll show you. A just real quickly what a paradiddle is for anybody who might not know what it is, but I think most people do. And there's three types that I use, the single paradiddle, double paradiddle, and triple paradiddle. Single paradiddle is right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Double paradiddle is right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. And of course, the triple paradiddle is right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. Now, the reason why these are so great, and what what I like to do is get an exercise that utilizes all three of those, and it's good to do with a click track or keep a hi hat going for time. And I'll show you what I do. I do. Singles, doubles, and triples, and then back down. Goes like this. That's a really great exercise, and if you do it fast or slow, just always have a click track and it really helps to develop the hands. Um, there's also another exercise that I use uh, that utilizes just a single paradiddle and a double paradiddle. And that is good because it makes you alternate um, to the left hand. And with time, it goes like this. One, two, three, four. back to the right hand. The third exercise that I like to use with paradiddles is based around a triplet, which is a double paradiddle, and then I kind of made up this little sticking 
uh, exercise that works with the double paradiddle in a triplet format. And it consists of nine strokes. And this is, this is the way it goes. It's right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right. And then it starts over, but it begins with the left hand. Uh, same way, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. Now, you combine that with a double paradiddle, and it works in a triplet feel. And uh, here's, the way, here's the way it would work. Two, three, four. That works great on a drum set, and I'll be demonstrating that in just a second. All right, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start with uh, the first exercise I show you, and I'm going to play it around the drum set. Let me take this practice pad off here and uh, show you how it works. And I'm going to accent the beginning of each paradiddle, single, double, and triple, with a tom-tom. And you can see how it kind of works uh, around the kit. It goes like this. One, two, one, two, three, four. That's the first exercise. Um, there's many variations you could do on that, but that's just a basic one to use with that. Here's the second example. Uh, I'm going to accent the beginning of each paradiddle on the toms, and it's the single paradiddle and the double paradiddle. And this is how that all works. One, two, one, two, three. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but see how it alternates. If you keep time with the hi-hat, it makes you alternate. It makes you start one with the right hand, one with the left hand. Uh, that's a great exercise. And of course, there's many more ways you can use it around the drums, but that's a good place to start. Now, the third example, I'm going to get a little flashier with. And uh, it's a good, good exercise to use. If you get past just where you could do it with just your hands, and then you start being able to use your feet along with the example, this is what it would sound like. I'm going to crash on the beginning of each paradiddle. And uh, this is the example with, the tr with it's a triplet. It's a double paradiddle with that little permutation, the, the little exercise that I made up. And that's how this would go. One, two, one, two. That's the paradiddles. We're going to talk about grace notes now, or ghost notes. These are like the little, tiny, very soft hits on the snare or hi-hat or ride cymbal that basically set up the groove. You have the basic beat, which is maybe boom, bap, boom, bap. But in between that, you have all these little notes, little dynamics. And these create the feel and uh, the groove. And I'm going to give you a couple exercises that will help you to work on grace notes, and then you can apply them. These are things like, in Mr. Big Music, 
Fool Us Today has some grace notes in it, and Mr. Gone, a couple of examples. Uh, the first exercise I'll show you is real simple. Um, and it's basically just uh, eighth notes between the hi-hat and snare, and then with a the backbeat. Very simple. Here's how it goes. One, two, three, four. Now, in that example, you can see all I'm doing is basically playing very soft with my left hand on the snare. But it gives this kind of a motion, the forward motion, and it sets up a groove. Um, another uh, way I can kind of expand on that is I'll give you an example with that same kind of thing, but then I'll go into the Fool Us Today groove, which basically puts a triplet on the left hand on the snare. So I'll start with the first example, just playing what I just did, and then I'll go into Fool Us Today, and you can see how it all works. Okay? One, two, three, four. Now, I got a little more elaborate with the bass drum a couple times, but that's the basic, that's how you start. So you can see how that changed the feel of the groove when I started doing the triplets of the left hand. All right, the third example I want to show you, it's a little more advanced, and it's something that's been really important in my development um, with grooves and grace notes and feels, and I use it all the time in many, many different ways in Mr. Big music and jazz and Latin and rock and roll. And Simply, this is how you start it. Uh, I'll show you what the bass drum does, and then I'll show you what the left hand does. This is where to start. First bass drum. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now the left hand plays opposite the bass drum. They don't hit at the same time, uh, except you accent the backbeat. And together, they sound like this. One, two, three, four. Now, once you get that down, you, you feel comfortable with that. Then you add in your right hand by playing quarter notes or uh, eighth notes. Uh, you add the hi-hat. And I'll, I'll play a couple bars uh, just to give you an example of how this all works. This is how it all sounds together. One, two, three. Now, as you can see, there's many variations. You could do a lot of different things, and I even kind of took it into halftime a little bit. Uh, but once you get the thing down between the bass drum and the left hand, the world is yours. A universe of ideas opens up. Really? <laughs> First thing I want to do is, is Billy and I are going to show you some um, just some examples of how grace notes can be used within a song. Uh, Billy and I are the rhythm section of Mr. Big. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of temperamental um, and Mr. Gone, which kind of show how what you can develop into with grace notes.
Well, I've worked with Pat for about eight years now. It's probably longer than I've ever worked with any drummer in my life. And it's been a good experience for me because I think bass players and drummers uh, need to know each other well as musicians. I think too many musicians spend too much time alone. You know, drummers practicing alone, bass player practicing alone. Where Pat and I practice together a lot. We go together to the rehearsal place and sit down together. So since I've worked with them for so long, we've played together, practiced together so much, I really learned a lot about time. I learned a lot about drums from him, actually. And it's good, again, for a bass player to know about drums. because, And similarly, a drummer to know about bass, because you, you, the closer you work together, the better the whole band's going to sound, I believe. But well, Pat's a really good fusion of a lot of uh, styles, but his main foundation is a real solid rock, just basic, good, hardcore rock. And on top of that, he's added uh, a little bit of Latin, a little bit of fusion, a tiny bit of jazz. And I know he's into some drummers like Billy Cobham and some of the cool, uh, Lenny White, some of the cool fusion guys and things like that. That shows in his playing as well. But the, the thing that he's real strong at, uh, that, which shows a lot in the studio, is that he's, uh, he's just a, a really good, solid player as far as his time, his tuning, uh, his finesse, and his ability to uh, watch what's going on and add the right thing. The next thing I want to talk about is the hi-hat. And it's not just hitting it with a stick. I think everybody knows how to hit it with a stick. What I want to concentrate on is what you do with your foot. Because to me, the hi-hat adds another color. It's like a percussion instrument. Um, I think a lot of drummers, sometimes they play a lot up here, play grooves, and basically their left foot, they just kind of let it hang here and die. Well. I wanted to do a little bit more with it. So the first thing I wanted to do is get this technique which is called the heel toe. And I'll show you what that is right now and what it sounds like. It goes like this. Okay. What I do is the heel opens it up and the toe closes it. Now, in order for me to develop this technique, it's kind of painful. It kind of hurts a lot uh, when you first try to do it because you're using some muscles that you, that you don't use very much. And these are muscles that are in the front of your leg. Um, and what I did is I took a watch and I made sure that I tried to do this every day. And what I would do is I, I started timing myself. In the first couple days, I couldn't even do it more than a minute. But I kept at it, and after about two weeks, I was able to go for 10 minutes. And the first time I, I recorded with this uh, and used it in a song is a song called Voodoo Kiss. And, and I'll show you how I, how I used it. It went like this. One, two. Four. Now, as you can see, I was trying to set up uh, this kind of kind of very loose uh, New Orleans kind of mojo groove the best the best way to describe it and um, now uh, I use this this technique in many many songs a good example of of how I use the hi-hat to help set up a groove is in the song take cover um, and you can see see it closer and how it works with the bass guitar in the example that Billy and I do in the video but to show you what I used as an exercise when I was figuring out what to play in this song um, I would go back and forth between the heel toe technique and eighth notes on the hi-hat. And that's how this works. Uh, I'll play the, the take cover groove along with the hi-hat and show you how I go back and forth. One, two, three, four.
Now, as you can see, what, what that did for me is it takes a lot of coordination because your right hand and your left, uh, excuse me, your right foot and your left hand do the same thing over and over again. The only thing that changes is your left foot on the hi-hat. So it helps to develop um, strength, stamina, and coordination. And uh, just as an exercise, it's a great thing to try. All right, I want to show you one more thing with the hi-hat uh, also that shows how, you, how it can be used kind of like a maraca which is a, you know, a shaker, kind of a percussion instrument. And I, I use this in Temperamental. I've used it in, um, what's the other song? Hmm, Merciless off our first record. And it kind of goes like this. You can hear the difference. I'll play the groove, and then I'll add the hi-hat. And you can see how it kind of helps to enhance the groove. One, two, three, four. So you can see how that kind of changed the groove a little bit when I add that. It got a little more, kind of gives a little more excitement um, and sets it up to where you can hear the, the kind of funkiness of the whole picture that I'm trying to paint. Alright, we're going to talk about some footwork, uh, exercises and some techniques that I use, things that help me develop my uh, foot technique. Uh, the first thing, this is a Tama Iron Cobra pedal. This is what I use. But the first thing I do is there's a toe stop and it screws onto the footboard right here. What I do is I take that off as soon as I get the pedal. The reason why I do that is because I use a kind of a sliding technique and I want to be able to slide as far forward as possible. And uh, you take that toe stop off and this allows you to do that. Another thing I use is baby powder. Why, you ask, do I use baby powder? Well, I'll tell you. Sometimes the bottom of your shoe, which slides on the pedal, uh, gets sticky or wet and it sticks and it won't slide. So I had to figure out a way to use, uh, excuse me, I had to figure out a way to have that not happen. So I took the baby powder and I put a little on the carpet right by the pedal. Then I put my foot in there and kind of rub it around a little bit. And then when I put it on the pedal, it slides forward very easily. And, uh, I'll show you a little exercise I use to basically work out my foot with this sort of technique. It goes like this. So you can see the pedal, the way it moves and the way my foot moves across the, the footboard, it has to slide forward. Um, another technique that I use, and uh, you need to have a dry foot bottom, is the heel toe technique. I use this all the time, and it's very important. 
Um, let me show you what it is. It's similar to what I did on the hi-hat earlier, but on the kick drum, it sounds different. And I'll do it fast, and then I'll slow it down and show you what, what, what I use. Here it is. So what's happening is my heel comes down, that's one hit, and then my toe goes down, that's another hit. So you get this rocking motion. Uh, I'm going to use a groove to show you how this works. So I'll just play it. It goes like this. So what's nice about that is uh, it has this kind of a swing to it also. It's different than just hitting all the strokes down. Um, when, when I developed this heel-toe technique, I, I wanted to use it in a song. And that's kind of how I came up with the groove for Jane Doe, uh, as you saw Billy and I demonstrating. And I'll play the beat to Jane Doe, and, and you can see where I use the, the uh, heel-toe technique in this groove. It goes like this. One. Two, three, four. The next thing I want to talk about is an exercise that was really helpful in strengthening my foot technique. The first thing you do is you take the spring off the pedal. Now the beater, as you can see, is floating freely. And you're probably wondering how this works. Well, I'll show you. Take the spring off the pedal, and this is what I do. Here we go. Now, I don't know if you can tell what's going on, but if you don't put, pick your foot up off the pedal, the beater will stay on the bass drum head. So it forces you to pick that foot up off the pedal and get your foot off the pedal. And that's, that's what I'm trying to develop because there's muscles in the front of your leg here that are very difficult to isolate and strengthen. And this exercise will isolate these muscles, strengthen them. It's kind of painful, it kind of hurts, but what I do is I do it five minutes with both feet every day. So I get a watch, and I look at the watch, and I just tie myself and force myself to do it. And doing this has really helped me to strengthen my foot, I gain control. Part, another benefit of this is it keeps your heel down. When your heel is down, you increase your control. That's what I use to develop my foot technique. Okay, well once you get all this little foot exercises together and you, and you try uh, to strengthen some of these muscles. What I'm doing now, this is an exercise that I use, and I started doing uh, double strokes on my feet, triplets, and then sixteenth notes. And I'll show you, this is something that I do now, and it's good for like soloing over, but it's, uh, it just shows you how far you can go with this sort of uh, technique. It goes like this. One, two, three, four.
I want to talk a little bit about singing and drumming and why I kind of enjoy singing and drumming and kind of the background and the philosophy behind it. When I was young and playing in bands, copy bands in high school, just somewhere along the line somebody asked me if I sang. And I wanted to and I thought, well, uh, you know, I'd like to try and the guy just happened to say, well, you know, you should because if you're in a band and you sing, you're more of an asset to the band than a drummer who doesn't sing. And so you might have a better chance of getting the gig over drummers who don't sing. And the cool thing about singing is it's kind of like having a, another arm because the voice and the melody you sing has another, it's a kind of a uh, syncopated rhythm over the things you do with your other four limbs. So it kind of increases your independence one more level. And that's why I kind of got into doing that. Another thing that I did is when I, people ask me about the solo, singing yesterday while I play a drum solo. This kind of came about because most of the time when you play drum solos, people, the only people that really want to listen to them are other drummers. And so I was thinking to myself, what would be kind of a unique approach to a drum solo that might interest other people who aren't drummers? And I thought, ah, I'll sing. So I came up with this wild, wacky thing, and I came up with yesterday, and uh, it seems to keep people in their seats when, when it's time to do the drum solo. Other than going outside and getting a Coke or going to the bathroom, they stay seated and they enjoy it and it puts a smile on their face. And that's kind of why I even got into the whole idea in the first place. And that's why it happened. Uh, I want to talk about a couple things that people have seen me do live and uh, a lot of Mr. Big fans ask me about a couple things and one of them is the intro to Addicted to That Rush and they wanted to know how I do the very fast hi-hat stuff. Uh, first off, I start out with very simple groove. It's just this. I'll show you right now. One, two, three, four. And what I start to do is to start to do double strokes on the hi-hat, but not the snare drum. So slow down, it goes like this. I'll slow it down first, and then I'll speed it up, and you can see how it starts to kind of sound like addicted. One, two, three, four. One of the licks that a lot of people ask me about, uh, that I use all the time, I want to show you. Um, it's this kind of a tom-tom back and forth move that I use all the time. And it basically has to do with alternating. And it's a six stroke uh, move. And it's it goes like this. It's right, left, right, left, kick, kick. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, that's the easy part. The hard part is going the other direction. You have to start with your left hand on the other direction. So you would go left, right, left, right, kick, kick. So it's the alternating that's important. Okay, I'll start slow and then I'll speed it up. Okay, now one more thing I want to show you with this basic idea is 
when you do, you just do four strokes, which would just be right, left, kick, kick. One, two, three, four. I do that all the time, and a lot of people ask me um, why it sounds a little different when I do it and then they do it. And the reason is, is that I alternate from right, left to left, right. And I'll start slow, show you how that sounds, with just doing the four strokes. What kind of happens in there is I'm just using a single bass uh, pedal and the hands, but it, when you get really fast, it kind of starts sounding like a double, a double kick, and it's kind of unique and it sounds great. Put in a lot of different, uh, different ways in songs, and it's something that I use a lot. So that's how you do it. The next thing I want to talk about is, is uh, a part and a little drum lick or trick that people ask me a lot about. And it's from the song Colorado Bulldog. Um, what happens is, they ask me how do I make the hi-hat work when I have ba both bass pedals going. Um, what I do is, I put my heel on the hi-hat while I'm playing the left bass drum pedal. Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate what I do with the bass drums in Colorado Bulldog. When I, and I'll start with just the bass drums, and then I'll move my heel over and start using the hi-hat. And this consists of uh, single strokes with the left foot, and then I pop in and out with double strokes with my right foot. It goes like this. One, two, one, two, three, four. My philosophy and approach to drumming is based on two things. One, the groove is the most important. It has to groove no matter how many licks and tricks you put into it. It still has to have a feel that feels right with the song and the melody. And two, I like to come up with drum parts that are unique to the song. So if you heard the drum part without the other music, you would still know what song it was. And there's kind of a lot of examples in Mr. Big Music, uh, I like to think so, like Take Cover or Temperamental or Mr. Gone or Jane Doe. They all have a unique drum part, not just the real basic two and four. And I want to introduce this last thing of uh, a performance that Billy and I did special for this video. And it's kind of a different approach, a kind of a new style, and a lot of people maybe aren't familiar with hearing Billy and I play this way. It consists of kind of a Latin, into jazz, into this kind of funk thing. It was a lot of fun to do it, and I hope you enjoy it.